A mystery within a mystery. Our investigation into the 1985 disappearance of Joyce Yost has unearthed another unsolved case, and police need your help to close it. KSL investigative reporter and cold podcast host Dave Colley explains how one man's phone call could provide answers for the families of multiple missing women. I'm reporting a body that I found. Mm -hmm. You have a body? Yeah, a body that, that, I, that I just happened across. In April of 1987, Weber County Dispatch received an anonymous phone call from a man who claimed he had come up here to Causey Dam, parked his car, and then hiked two or three miles back over a few ravines to where he found a human body. There was a perk there. There was, was a lady? Well, I assumed the body was a lady, but I didn't open the purse or anything. At the time, the county had two active cases involving missing women, Cherie Warren and Joyce Yost. Both had disappeared two years earlier both were presumed murdered. You won't give me your name? Of course not. I didn't do, have anything to do with it. Investigators believed they might solve a murder if they could find that body. But the man who held the key to doing so refused to identify himself. So we had no name, we had nothing. Retired Weber County Sheriff's Deputy Rod Layton had two thoughts when he first took the case. He found a body. There's no question in our mind. And we never once believed that he was involved. But he knew the chances of finding the body were slim without better details from the anonymous caller. It's just so vast. I mean, trying to find that one spot where he was at is, it, it, you're gonna have to walk on to this body. Layton set his sights instead on finding the mystery man who had made the call. That's where I spent my life for the next three and a half, four years. A psycholinguistics expert in New York even analyzed the voice. He also believed he definitely was telling the truth, said that this guy was probably a, an introverted personality. He didn't need association with others. He just went up and did his thing. His thing? Uh, he talked about looking for sediments. He talked about looking for rocks. Or maybe visiting his private garden. That area back in the 80s and 90s was a very hot place for marijuana growers. At a dead end, the detectives decided to release the call to the media, call crime solvers hoping someone way, would hear and recognize that voice. We received hundreds and hundreds of calls. I know who this is. This is their voice. I would sit down with them and I would listen to them. Then I would play the tape. And of course, you know, after hundreds and hundreds of these, I never, I never found the caller. And searchers never found the body. She's there. I still believe to this day she's there. Layton has good reason to hold out hope. Just one year before, a cougar hunter had stumbled onto a different set of remains near Causey. If he wouldn't have just literally crawled on his hands and knees into this little um, cave type thing, he would have never found it. And I'm just theorizing he laid down here, perhaps with his head over to the west side. We found boots, we found driver's license, we were able to identify the person. It was a hunter that had gone hunting and got lost in a snowstorm and crawled into a little area, and that body sit there for 44 years. Police were relieved to finally bring the family of Rudolph Bertinoli closure. This is wonderful. This is a, a relief. The detective, the very first thing he said was, I've got to find the family. Layton hopes investigators can one day do the same for another family, maybe Sheree Warren's or Joyce Yost's. But without the caller, it will likely take a stroke of luck. It's going to happen one of these days. I just, I just think that one of these days, somebody's going to come across it. So if you have any information about the mysterious caller or recognize a voice, call the Weber County Sheriff's Office and download the latest episode of The Cold Podcast on Amazon Music for more on the decades-long search for Joyce Yost.